there was no hope for a while of finding it. Uh, we just have to make a for sure positive ID on this guy, but now the light's in our favor, so we should be able to actually figure out if this is our guy or not. In 2020, there have seemingly been more rare birds spotted in the state than ever before. With spring well underway, the floodgates opened up, releasing waves of migrants on eager birders looking to find the next rarity. On a day in early May, one of these rarities was found in Milwaukee, prompting us to go east. Today's mission? Locate the black-throated gray warbler. We just got here and there's tons of people over there looking at something, so we're assuming it's over there. You never know though. But they all seem pretty content. There's no real search. We hurried over to the birders who reported they had just seen the warbler across the river. We scanned the area and found several orange crown warblers and a black and white warbler before finally getting eyes on our target bird, the black-throated gray warbler. I just moved down again. It's near the water's edge. Nice. Oh, there it is. The black-throated gray warbler is a striking resident of western North America. Named for its black throat and gray back, the key identifying feature of this bird is a small speck of yellow near the front of its black and white face. Black-throated gray warblers feed mostly on insects and nest in forests. Their feeding movements have been noted as being methodical and slower than other warblers, and they are most often seen foraging in the middle and lower levels of forests. With the adrenaline of finding a lifer still pumping through our veins, we headed even farther east to a house where another rare bird had been seen. Hey everybody, we're at somebody's house right now. We just signed the visitor check-in. And we are looking for a summer tanner that was supported. And the homeowners were nice enough to let people come visit. So they have a great, great yard here. So we're just, we saw a Baltimore Oriole and we're waiting for the summer. We got a black-throated gray warbler earlier which was a lifer for both of us, so we're super stoked about that. And hopefully we'll get some more rare stuff today. The backyard turned out to be a bird paradise, complete with water features, numerous bird feeders, and plenty of migrants. While we were there, we saw a very cooperative oven bird, a hermit thrush, white-crowned sparrows, and plenty of orioles. This kept us entertained until finally we spotted a glint of red. You got the summer? Yep, he just dove down. He was in that tree back there. Is he on the ground now? Uh, nope, he's right there. Right, right in this, this tree? Side. Okay. Nope. Deep back there. See that? Oh, That's deep. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. The male summer tanager is the only entirely red bird in North America. Females are mustard yellow in color, and both sexes are specialists in catching bees and wasps out of the air. After catching the insects, they scrape the stingers off on tree branches before eating them. Summer tanagers overwinter in Central and South America and breed in the southern United States, with their normal range extending as far north as Illinois. Nesting occurs in deciduous or pine oak forests, and males only choose one mate per breeding season. Look at him. He's adorable. He's gorgeous. Those were the, like, as pretty much as good a looks as you could ask for. And what was happening is the summer would come to the orange feeder and then some Orioles would come and chase it off. So the Orioles seem pretty aggressive, like they've been chasing a lot of stuff around. They seem to really dominate the orange feeder space. So our day, once again, seems to be going pretty well. And yeah, I mean, I'm surprised how well we've been able to do lately with the rare birds. Hopefully it continues on to the next thing. Yeah, let's go do it. Having gone two for two in Milwaukee County, we took the next few weeks to search for warblers until something really rare got reported in Dane County's Patrick Marsh. We're at Patrick Marsh out near Madison and Sun Prairie and we're trying to find a neotropic cormorant that had been seen here a couple of days ago and there have been a trickle of reports coming in the past few days. So we're going to see if we can find it with some of the double crested cormorants that look like they're out there. While looking out over the lake, the sun was in our faces, making it tough to discern exactly what was out there. 
Close into shore, we could see gulls, terns, and American white pelicans. In addition to these birds, a few cormorants were close in as well, but most of them were far out into the shining abyss of sunlight, making it impossible to see if our bird was there. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's just how I feel about this situation. The cormorants are mostly out in the place where we can't see them because the sun is coming from that direction. There's a couple by the shore over here, so we're going to look at those and see if one of those might be it. But it's really hard to tell unless you can get kind of a close look because it's just size difference and a couple of small features that differentiate Neotropic from Double Crested. We decided to bide our time and hope that the cormorants would move into a better location. We walked around the marsh, picking up some warblers and other birds that reside in fields and wetlands. We also stumbled onto a shallow pond where a particular amphibian was working hard on propagating its species. So Ryan and I are here in Madison looking for a bird, and we decided to check out this pond, and we stumbled across a bunch of American toads calling and mating. So basically anywhere you look around the edge of the pond, you can see toads crawled around. There's two right here. You gotta make sure you don't step on them. It's really interesting sight to behold in a very noisy operation that have going on here. Very chill. So here's one of the toads. So toads are amphibians and they hibernate during the winter and then they come out in the spring to mate. They're native to the state. Pretty cute little guys, and they're definitely not anything you should be afraid of. They don't have any toxins or claws, they're not gonna hurt you. Pretty laid back. We crossed an open field and made our way to the south side of the lake, where lighting was much better. We noticed a perched cormorant that looked different than the others. We walked all the way around Patrick Marsh, kind of waiting for the cormorants to come back. And it looks like we have one out here that has the elongated tail, looks like it's a small size. I think we might have our Neotropic, which would be amazing if that's true, because it seemed like there was no hope for a while of finding it. Uh, we just have to make a for sure positive ID on this guy, but now the light's in our favor, so we should be able to actually figure out if this is our guy or not. Totally him. He's tiny compared to the other one. Do you see it? So, see the big one and then the small one to the right of it? That small one is our dude. After determining that this was in fact the Neotropic Cormorant, a homeowner was nice enough to allow us onto their property to get even better views of this bird that is extremely rare in our state. The Neotropic Cormorant is a sleek bird inhabiting sheltered waters of the Caribbean, Latin America, and the southern United States. They can most easily be distinguished from the much more common double-crested cormorant because of their smaller size and longer tail, although the two species are sometimes seen flocking together. Neotropic cormorants feed mostly on fish and other aquatic creatures and are the only cormorant species to dive from mid-air into the water to catch prey. Nesting occurs in the spring, and nests are constructed in trees and shrubs where one to six eggs are laid. We just got back to the parking lot, uh, great day looking for the cormorant. It was a lot of effort. We definitely had to search it out and it was not an easy bird to find. Luckily we got close enough to look at those ID features to differentiate it from the double crested cormorant. It's feeling really good about that and hopefully we'll see some more good birds in the next few days. Feeling good about seeing the Neotropic cormorant? We headed home, appreciating the fact that we were able to get such great views of a bird so far out of its native range. From warblers to tanagers to cormorants, you never know what might show up during spring migration. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. You are convinced enough that we're going to find something? No, but I'm going to come on this side. But just in case we now do. Now I have to look into the sun. You're so much better lit on this side. Though. Uh, tan lines, though. Oh, man, the tan lines.